This was Mr. Bleeny's room. He stayed the whole time he was at the bodies, till they moved him. Flowered curtains, thin and frayed, fall to within five inches of the sill, whose window shows a strip of building land, tussocky, littered. Mr. Bleeny took my bit of garden properly in hand. Bed, upright chair, 60 watt bulb, no hook behind the door, no room for books or bags. I'll take it. So it happens that I lie where Mr. Bleeny lay, and stub my fags on the same saucer souvenir, and try stuffing my ears with cotton wool to drown the jabbering set he egged her on to buy. I know his habits, what time he came down, his preference for sauce to gravy, why he kept on plugging at the four aways, likewise their yearly frame, the Frinton folk who put him up for summer holidays, and Christmas at his sister's house in Stoke. But if he stood and watched the frigid wind, tousling the clouds, lay on the fusty bed, telling himself that this was home, and grinned, and shivered, without shaking off the dread that how we live measures our own nature, and at his age having no more to show than one hired box should make him pretty sure he warranted no better, I don't know.